kwako
travel very well with my family to Europe. We had a good time there in uh, Belgium, in Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, in France. Although we missed our flight to Rome, but other things were all good. We never missed our fli flight to home. Um, so read uh, James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to your service today. Lord Father, may you cleanse us. Page us in the high soap in the power of your blood. Fill us more with your spirit, Father. May you speak through us. May you prepare us to be sanctuaries, to be pure and holy. Father, make us malleable to your word, Lord, Father, that we may do your will in every day of our lives. Father, may you transform all our life situations by the power of your word. Father, as we come to hear your words of life, may something change in our lives because of those ancient words ever true. May you speak to your people. We commit everything to your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Right there, we may be seated. The Bible is saying, he, A man who endures temptation, blesses the man that enjoys temptation when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. So, every believer must pass through the tests, through the storms of life. So, when we meet the storms of life, we must not be complaining, people, we must not murmur, but we must know that God is in it all, He knows how to. To take you through it all so many christians may be asking uh, how shall we treat god's trials when we face them you know trials are not good things that we but in heaven they are more precious than gold the trial of your faith is more precious than gold i know uh, every one of us doesn't enjoy that season my subject today is um, what to do and what not to do in the season of your trials because life is about seasons this is, we can't expect it to be all rosy all the way through and, call out and be called overcomers at the end. It means there's a season where the devil is let loose in our lives for the purpose of the glory of God. There's a season when God allows gloom and sadness in our lives. Like life is about seasons. Now we're entering winter. There are seasons where it doesn't look so good, but it's actually good in those times. So we must treat the trials as something good coming in our way and Will be proven worthy of the promise because there's the last trial that you must overcome for you to be counted worthy of the promise. You must prove yourself worthy of the promise. Shatrek, Mishak, and Abednego, um, uh, they were examples that sometimes God does not put out the fire, but He enters the fire. Sometimes God does not remove your situation, but is with you in your situation. When you pass through the waters, when you pass through the fires, when you pass through your circumstance, the one assurance that you need to have is that Jesus is with me. If he's not with you, then you must start doing something in consecration. Because when the floods and the storms meet you without Christ, then you are in problems. But when they meet you with Christ, you are, you are rest assured, assured that you are going through through it all i've learned to trust jesus now may is a may of great happy is a month of great happenings uh, this is the house where Abraham was in the mid 40s well, this is where the lord talked to him in the first days of may 1946 uh, by the water speaker there to say go to the cave where he received the commission now when we hear the commission where the angel says not even cancer shall stand before your prayers when we hear that God says, I've, I've been sent from the presence of God, the angel is telling him to show you your peculiar life. The background of that is hard times. The background of that is rejection in ministry. The background of that is when the supernatural manifested in his life. Even his own pastor, Roy Davis, told him that these are devils. And be, when he saw that, he was affected and he had to go to a cave somewhere. To say, Lord, is this, I don't want it. If it's not you, I don't want it. Then God came down and says, no, you have a peculiar ministry. And I'm sent from the presence of the Lord to tell you that uh, the, uh, not even cancer, if you are sincere, not even cancer can stand before your prayers. So we see even his mountains, the mountains of Montana there, that even in his life there's ups and downs so as a believer your life will have ups and downs it doesn't mean you are not on the program of god 
God is a God of variety. For you to appreciate good health, there are times where you'll be down. But as an equal of God, you can't be paralyzed at any time. You always rise above the storms. That's why that woman in Revelation chapter 12, the devil was spewing water to drown her. So the devil will follow after you to try and drown your testimony, to drown your positive confession, to drown your faith. But one thing you must do in seasons of temptation is go to a higher level. So that woman was given two wings of a great ego. Because when she was in this level, the devil was spewing water to drown her. But there is a level where you cannot be drowned. There is a level where you cannot be discouraged. There is a level where people can say anything, it doesn't touch you. But you react with love. You react with confidence, knowing that he that has started a good work in you will finish that way. God does not leave you. He has not brought you this far to leave you. But in every tear, in every sorrow, he bears a part that none can bear below. So when the devil was spewing water to drown the woman, and God raised, gave the wings of an eagle, the devil could have continued again, maybe not spewing water this time, but steering storms. But the devil knew that now if it is equal, it will rise above the storm. He knew that it's no wasting time. If you try to brew winds, the eagle will rise above the winds. So, there are three. These T's here are very important. There is temptations, trials, and tribulations. All of them need one answer, the blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. So, temptations is the devil tempting you. God does not tempt people. It's the devil tempting you. When your man is tempted, he's drawn away in his own lust. But trials and tribulations, this is what brings us to our adoption. Adversity is the university of God to bring you to maturity. Because character is not a gift. But it is a victory. There is something you must overcome. There is something that you meet in your path and you don't have to dodge that thing. As long as you are in your path of duty. When the Red Sea meets you, it's going to open. As long as you are in your past part of duty. When you meet sadness and gloom, it's going to give way because you are in your path of duty. You are ordained in what you are doing. So in trials and tribulation, that's why even in the Galatians, even in adoption, the Bible says you are under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. You are under trials and tribulations, hardships. They are there to mold you. Every one of us will have their juniper experience. Where it feels like God is silent. Every one of us will have their Gethsemane. And the prophet says Jesus died more death in Gethsemane than even at the cross. In agony, in desperation, you meet those moments where you say, Father, let this cup pass. Uh, pass. And God says, no, you are, I'm passing it to you, that cup. And you are going to drink out of this cup because you cannot get to authority without drinking certain cups in life. Even the sons of Sepheti were asked that, they were saying, shall we sit on your right hand or left hand? He says, are you able to drink this cup? So there is a cup that you must drink for you to experience the cup of blessings. So there are trials and tribulations. We don't want to be broiler Christians, but we want to pass through the fire and the storms as long as it is God pointing into that. He will make a way for you. So every one of us who has a share of tears to shed and trouble troubles us all. Every one of us is shimeis that will spit at them. As long as you are not wrong in that, because everyone will suffer as a wrongdoer. Uh, uh, no, I mean, every Christian must not suffer as a wrongdoer. But the Bible says, don't suffer as a wrongdoer, but suffer as a child of God. So, every one of us is ups and downs. When you are up, rejoice in the Lord. When you are down, rejoice in the Lord. It must not change your spiritual mood. It must not change your countenance. So they, they, there will be times when things, when your friends turn against you, like in the book of Job. There are times when even, even his wife turned against him. There is a time when it seemed even God has left him alone. There is a time even when your helpers are not able to help. And there are times when even those who are trying to help you will be put into storms for trying to help you. But the help of the helpless will be there to abide with you. So in that time, it's not time for pity party. It's time to cheer and know that 
God is the master of the rains. He's the master of the winds. He can calm the storms and God will remember you. Faith has never been forgotten, but God will remember you in your season of your trials. So the Bible says in Psalm 61 verse 2, when my soul is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It is normal that one day you'll be overwhelmed. Whether it's a school, one day you'll be overwhelmed. Whether it's in business, one day you'll be overwhelmed. Whether you are faithful in marriage, one day something will overwhelm you. Whether it's in ministry, one day you'll be overwhelmed. But there is a provision for such moments. Before you even get to those moments, there is a provision. There is a place to let off the pressure. That's why the prophet preached on letting off the pressure. The pressures will mount in this life. And trials will mount even from the people that you love. Even from the people that love you. It's not their fault. It's not your fault. But it's a path that you must go through as a Christian. Some through the waters. Some through the floods. Some through the fires. God knows what he's doing. You can be overwhelmed yet over overcoming. It doesn't mean when you are overwhelmed, you are, all, you are giving excuses, you are down, you want everyone to come and love you. You can even love others and help others when you are in your own storm. Every time when the prophet was passing through this uh, painful thing of the squirrel ulcer, like devil, like thing that was turning, he says, I cried for healing both night and day. He was conducting prayer lines while he was passing through his storms. For all those years, until he was an old man, when he was praying, Lord, heal me from this, and the answer was not coming, he still was praying, people coming from wheelchairs. When you are passing through what you are passing through, don't stop to be an instrument to help others come out of what they are passing through. Where is God in hard times? He is training you. He is not silent. You must trust him. Sometimes there is a dry patch. Where things are just dry, spiritually, financial. It doesn't mean you are alone. It's seasons that you must understand. There is a time where God will allow rentals to be tough. You are not alone. God knows that you need the rentals. He knows. His eye is on the sparrow and he watches over you. There is a time when even spiritual attacks are all around you. There is a time when even you, you're almost missing your installment somewhere. There is a time when sadness and gloom is around you. There is a time when rejection and worries and storms are overwhelming you. But remember, cloud disguise doesn't mean God's absence. And the cloud disguise doesn't mean God's blessing. God is the God of all weather and all storms. And he knows how to lead his children. He knows sometimes you'll be surrounded by betrayers and accusations. Sometimes you'll see stagnation. Sometimes you'll see failures and crises in your life. Sometimes you'll be surrounded by disappointments and sadness and worries and depression. It doesn't mean you are weak when you pass through depression as a Christian. But it means that, that you are overwhelmed. But there is a rock somewhere. There is a provision in time of storm. There is a precious hiding place. There is a city of refuge. There is somewhere where you can meet God who is a present help in time of need. So, God doesn't give the hardest battle to his toughest soldiers. But he creates toughest soldiers through life's hardest battles. For you to be strong, for you to meet the challenge of the hour, you must pass through rough training and blessed is it that endure the hardship you must endure hardship as a soldier of the cross so believers do pass through hard times even those who encourage you they pass through hard times i have my own storms but i'm not going to be a storm because of storms i'm not going to be someone who speaks negative because i'm through negative i'm not going to change my testimony because of circumstances i'm going to be positive even in adversity even in hardest times why does god allow us to go through trials and hard times the hardwoods they push their roots deeper in hard times the diehard believers they push they have their tap root they have a source somewhere where even in driest moment there is some sap of water. You must have your hidden power somewhere. Where even in the hardest moment, you have a source somewhere where you can get answers. Yes, man, as a Christian, as you journey through the way, singing as you go, many arrows pierce.
pierce your soul from without within from within even from your favorite friends even from your relative even from your your family members even from your children even from yourself you will have self-inflicted wounds and god allows those moments because pain sometimes is gain we cannot be just in a flowery bed of ease we must fight but when the battle is over we shall wear a crown god is able to turn your darkest hour to the brightest day god is able to turn your bright your, your dark your, your dry patch because a desert shall blossom god when that season is over you shall see the rainbow when the storm is over when the storm is over in Colorado there, God says, why don't you walk with me? The storm is a reason to bring him closer, to have a closer walk with God. Sometimes we drift away from God and God brings a storm to bring us closer to him. Sometimes we take things for granted and God brings a storm to make us remember that is a present help in time of need. When Israel was all over the world, God brought the holocaust and persecutions and trials and hardships to drive them back to their homeland. Sometimes you leave your homeland, which is the message of the hour, which is your family altar, which is your prayer time. But in seasons of distress and grief, my soul is often found relief by thy return, sweet our prayer. We must not hear about the return of the sweet our prayer, but we must dwell forever in the sweet our prayer. When John was at the Isle of Patmos, it was in the hardest moments of his life that the best book of the Bible was written, the book of Revelation. He doesn't write about scorpions. He doesn't write about taskmasters. He writes about, I saw heavens open. In your hardest moment, don't write about your, how, your pains and don't write about your frustrations. Don't write about your worries. It doesn't glorify God. Write about the God who is bigger than your situation. He is bigger than your mountains. The best books of the Bible are books of adversity. The book of Job is one of the high quality books. The book of Ezekiel was written in captivity. The book of Daniel was written in, in, in captivity. The, the best moments of our lives is when we are squeezed. And the best performance of the third pool is during the squeeze. Because the potential that is lying dormant in you shall come to manifestation. The hidden power that is already in you through quotes and books and scriptures and the Holy Ghost and faith is manifested in seasons of distress and grief. That's why the we we the um, candlesticks were made of beaten gold so god beats his church through trials and tribulations he beats you until there is a reflection of christ let the world see jesus in you we don't want to see each other we want to see jesus uh, so the beaten gold in the candlestick was showing that gold is malleable it actually adjusts to the beatings of the word. When the word beats you, don't break. Amen. Don't be fragile. Be malleable to the beatings of the spirit. Be my be corrected. When the Lord corrects you, if you don't suffer, if you don't accept chastisement, you are a bastard child because you are not malleable to the word of God. But when you are passing through storms, you must know that you are too blessed to be stressed. Amen. Your blessing is not separated by your circumstance. Your blessing was written before you were born. And all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 upon you are blessed going in, blessed go going out. When you are blessed, blessed going in and blessed going out, it means even when you are blessed even going into hardships and you are blessed even when you are coming out of hardships. <laughs> hmm. Sometimes there are moments where you are left alone. It doesn't mean everyone, anyone is wrong. There are moments where pastors cannot help you. There are moments where your best friend just seems not to be available at the crucial moment. It's not a time to build grudges. It's not a time to count that this don't love me. It's a time to know that the help of the helpless is there. There is a time when money will fail you. There is a time when your bank card will fail you. But God will never fail you at that time. He is a hedge. That hedge that was in Job is around us again. 
So mistakes will happen. God will make sure that even if you are trying your best, mistakes will prove you are human. It doesn't mean that when it proves you are human, you are not a child of God. You are a child of God. It only means that you need him every passing hour. It means without him, you cannot do it all. God allows deadlines to threaten you. Yes, though you have quotes and scriptures, you are panicking because the deadline is there. He allows your landlord, he allows people around you to bring. It's the steering of the nest. Because you, for you to do solo flying, the nest must be steered. The, the loose feathers around you must be removed. It must be pricky sometimes so that you can launch out into realms of the power of God. The Bible says, blessed is the one who persevered under trial because when he has stood the test he shall receive a crown but how can we just get a crown when we have been just crowning and, uh, and nothing nothing painful nothing we, we, God just takes us through and nothing you need to feel the pinch sometimes but when the battle is over we shall wear a crown sister no matter how smart you are you must fight battles Father, with your suit, you must fight battles. It is allocated for every man who is a child of God to fight and be an overcomer. And he that overcometh shall sit with him at the throne. And here is an assurance. All things work for good, together for good, to those that are called according to his purpose. It means if there is a purpose that runs our lives, it's not comfort that runs our lives. It's something bigger than our comfort. That's why God would rather sometimes remove comfort when his purpose is at stake. When something, when your life is just stagnant, God will remove comfort. Now, I want you to know what to do when you are passing through the storms of life. The first thing, check yourself up. Like David will say, search me, O oh Lord. Be confident that you are in the right frame with God. Be confident that he is with you. Check yourself up. That you must know that you are in his will. That's why he says, try me, O Lord. Search me and know. That's why when Jehoshaphat, when his arrows were flying around him, he had to check what he was wearing. You notice he was wearing a garment that was attracting the storms sometimes you are carrying something in your life that is attracting the wrath of god before you say lord why me say try me <laughs> because when you say why me lord who should face what you are facing it seems you have somebody that you know who should face what you are facing and you are saying you are not the right person you are saying why me lord you the, the, you are the right person because heaven is banking on you. Heaven has measured every trial that you must face. When you are standing between a rock and a hard place, grace has determined the result before you are in that situation. So don't betray the heavens when they are banking on you. God measured and said, this one is little for my child. And then the child screams, oh Lord, why me? When heaven was saying, ah, that one I know. I, I, they are going to go through this. You must be seeing I'm going through, I'm going through. I'll pay the price. I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. One thing that the prophet teaches us in such times, he says, be certain of God. He says, when you have done all what you can do, you have made all wrongs right. You have prayed, you have fasted. You have made restitutions. You have been desperate. You have, you have prayed, you have called upon God and still you won't move. And still is silent in the message be certain of God he says it's time to be certain of God that's why men like Job will say though he slays me I will worship him the result of the situation doesn't make God worthy to be worshipped no he is worthy to be worshipped because we are born to worship even if he answers our God is able even if he doesn't answer we are still going to worship him he doesn't deserve worship because he has done something about your situation but because he is able he alone is able the writer of the song i think it is from hill songs or something he says uh, I, i've never lost my praise so in every situation never lose your praise 
God is not going to feel for you because you are, you are, you are moody. Because you, you, you are now putting a face in heaven. You are, you are now actually showing that you are not happy with what you are passing through. It doesn't move God. What moves God is spiritual matters. You are not going to make an emotional prayer to God and say, Lord, I've suffered, Lord, I've seen my way, Lord. God doesn't listen to my words. He says, my word. It's his word only that he listens to. You pray scripture and say, Lord, I know you are able. Even if I pass through the mouth, these hard mountains, one more mountain, one more valley, I know God will take me through. That is what moves God, not the Lord. Everyone is not answering. Even the pastor that you put is not answering. That is, those are not things that move God, those things. I'm going to answer, of course, myself, but <laughs> he says, I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed from he to, in heaven to stay. But I thank God I didn't lose everything. I've lost faith in people who say they care. But in the time of my crisis, they were never there. These people are not guilty, let me tell you. Those people who say they care, in the time of your crisis, when they're not there, you, they don't owe you to be there. They do care. You don't know how much they prayed for you. <laughs> but in my disappointments, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered. One thing never changed. I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith. But most of all, I never lost my praise. Whatever you lose in life, don't lose these things. I understand when you lose your job, when you lose this, those things come and go. But this hope, faith, joy, we will do it even after this life is over. I've let some blessings slip away when I lost focus and they went away but thank God I didn't lose everything I've lost possessions that were so dear I've lost some battles by walking in fear but in the midst of my struggle in my season of pain one thing never wavered one thing never changed I never lost my praise don't allow the devil to see your tears because you will repeat whatever brought your tears but confuse your enemy the devil is happy when he sees that it, you are feeling the pinch so avoid seeing that you, him seeing that you are feeling the pinch rejoice night and day as you, are, as you walk the narrow way you walk near narrow in that narrow way and things will turn for the good the Bible says in this beautiful scripture in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 Although the fig tree shall not blossom Neither shall the fruit be in the vines The labor of the olive shall fail The fields shall yield no meat The flock shall be cut off uh, from the fold And there shall be no more head in the stalls Yet will I rejoice in the Lord I will, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Whatever happens, joy must be there. You are commanded to rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Don't be a chameleon that picks your circumstance and projects it. Pick your, your, your depression and projects it. As I'm passing through my storms, I'm there to help you. I'm here there to tell you, be of good courage. When Grace Weeper was passing through a storm and that said, the Lord came and said, she's going to die. She went to someone who was sick. In the message, make the valley full of dishes. And says, God is still my healer. And God, it happened that the angel of the Lord heard that. And God did to reverse that, say the Lord. Because of how someone behaved in the hardest moments. How a reaction to an action doesn't justify that action or what. But when, you, when your shimei spits at you, your revelation shows that, that you are not the type of shimei. But when you speak back, you are another shimei. Right. <laughs> there is nothing that just happens accidental to those that love the Lord. And are called according to his calling. As long as you are sure you are called according to his calling, God sets a time and there's a purpose for everything that he does no matter how you pray and fast 
there will be nasty moments in your life actually one of the scriptures that promises us great things says though that that have left fathers and mothers and shall receive hundredfold houses lands brothers sisters with persecutions <laughs> We usually dissect and cut persecution away and say houses and lands and houses. Yes, the package comes with persecutions. You cannot take one. I know you may, you may not take persecutions only. Houses and lands also come. But when you are passing through that moment, let me tell you something. Be still and know that he is God. Um, one of the secrets you must know when you are passing through storms. Uh, when the devil is on the loose don't do risky things that can give the devil an advantage for example when Job has left camels and donkeys he was not going to run the next morning for a bank loan to buy new camels <laughs> because the devil is destroying camels at that season so if you are unwise and you take a bank loan to say I've just lost camels and what then you run and take more money to buy more camels the devil will say, oh, some more camels. Because it's a season where he's allowed to do rampage. Mm. Uh, let me say this carefully. I was also passing through my little seasons. You know, pastors also sometimes strengthen themselves in, in sermons they are preaching to you. Yes, we also pass through things ourselves. So, spiritually things happened, you know, that could have discouraged me. And it was quite a spear. Then when I, I, I also flew away to, to Europe at a time, at a season of trials. And I noticed that when you are in your season of trial, don't go to risky areas. Don't move away from your point of advantage. I have, a, a, I have scripture for that because in the, in the book of Ruth, when they had a, a famine came, right? A storm came. They made a mistake by moving away again from where they have an advantage. So, and they started losing more away there. <laughs> and they start saying, the devil, the devil, of course it's the devil, but you knew that he's being allowed at this moment. There is a time when the devil has to smile before he is defeated. It's a, it's a moment that is allowed. So, when they started moving from the from Bethlehem, because of problems they started losing Elimelech, losing uh, Malon, losing all the, even the in-laws it was affecting, you know when you make a wrong decision you drag many people to torment so I, I left in the season of my trial, I, it's over I, 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 I know, you know that when you pass through that season and you learn fast it doesn't repeat problems are lenient, if you are not if you are a slow learner, they keep repeating repeat it until you learn but if you quickly learn it passes <laughs> so when i was in amsterdam netherlands there eh, when we were just going back to belgium you know the devil was moved these pieces we lost our bus that we were going there and we we're waiting 30 minutes before and they played i don't know why those people did what they did but i said don't blame them so why should I blame them? <laughs> so we had to buy another ticket, went to um, back to Belgium. When I arrived, I, I was actually a bit late for that service. I did not preach that service. So then Sunday, I was supposed to be preaching in France. So, but because I had my family and I thought Europe is not easy to go back, I, I booked a ticket to Rome just a few days and I told the brothers in France that I'm no longer coming I'm going to Rome, the brothers in Rome rejoiced so I was going to preach there we went to the airport right time, two hours before, but we missed our flight those people you know, they just did something that I don't want to explain <laughs> but after everything, we sing through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus they just told us we should have checked in online so they penalized everyone 55 euro 50 until the final penalty with the bags was 500 euro at that time 
my bank card refused to work. It was not okay at that time. It was also sick. Um, and God, because that, I was going to quickly answer, you know, Brother Chaka and others knew exactly what was happening. So I had a lot of US dollars that could meet the situation. Those people told me that we don't accept US dollars here. I said, but every airport I've gone to, there is a bureau to change. Where you change? They said, not this one. I said, okay, I can pay at a higher rate. They said, we said we are not accepting USDs. As someone who preaches faith, I said, this one thing I know, God has never failed me yet. <laughs> and I watched a situation that seemed like afterwards, I would say, I remember he failed me there. <laughs> I know some of you have passed through that where you say, oh, but maybe he failed. I didn't understand why. The, finally, the plane left, and I looked at my little boy, he's two years, that, you know, we don't want to take such young people to storms. <laughs> but afterwards, when the plane left, my cat was already healed. I went there, <laughs> it, everything was working, everything was okay. So I said, why? Why this? But I, those who know me, I was rejoicing. Actually, I was posting good things. It's not time to, to post on Facebook that feeling low. <laughs> feeling discouraged. Hallelujah. But it's to say feeling so much better. <laughs> we have no time to be negative. But what I... I then found the pastor in... Uh, Pastor Lamotte there to say I, I, I'm back to France I told them I'm no longer preaching for you, I'm off to Rome I said I'm back to France then the deacon there told me that another brother told me that well when you said you are no longer preaching for us, a brother flew from Cameroon is the one who is preaching I said fine, I'm okay I like so they came to take me in the hotel I, I was carrying one of the smallest Bibles that we have. So I just sat in the pastor's car with a very small Bible. He says, where is your Bible? I said, no. Uh, 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 my sermon was in a laptop. So, but I knew that I'm no longer preaching. So I said, no. I have this big paper to write notes. He says, no, we can't lose a man like you. We have told the pastor from Cameroon that he's going to do 15 minutes. Then you go and take your laptop. So I went to take my laptop. Then, during, at the end of the service, there are things I have no control of myself. I, I may like them to be better and less clumsy, but I have no control. So spirits manifested, and it's not me who is poking that. But anyway, if they are there, why should they stay there? I was surprised. How everything was that demons were in the whole issue of tickets <laughs> because when we lost the when we finally found out what God wanted my wife was saying ah, but why doesn't God speak nicely before we lose money <laughs> I said he did <laughs> I knew that I was not supposed to go to Rome I remember last time when I also suffered going to Rome I, it, it was not in our plan but I'm going there next visit because i know god will allow me he says if you delight in the lord he will give you the desires of your heart okay but not in the season of your trials <laughs> in the season of your trials be careful not to add more pain on yourself allow the storms to pass then do your adventures but if you do your adventures in a risky moment the devil will bring you another another statistic you will just be counting one two and you are losing so when I prayed for this girl, she manifests and a lot of things were happening. And I said, no, take this girl away. I don't want drama. People won't under, I'll end up being not understood by many people. Take her to the pastor's office. I prayed for people. If you watch that video, a lot of things were happening. I know sometimes people feel like when demons manifest, I'm the one who is wrong. But in that one, also even strong men were collapsing under the anointing I, I'm, I, I don't like it as such but I have no control right okay so that 
when we went to the pastor's office, it was private, we didn't want to have drama. That demon spoke things which I then understood why I had to be in Paris. He says there's a, there was a Sangoma somewhere, I think it's in Ghana, who sensed that the, the, there was problems on Sunday in France. So that Sangoma is a, an aunt to this girl. So right from deep in Africa, they sent the sister of this girl to tell her, don't attend the Sunday service, there's problems. The sister arrived on Saturday in the home to say, let's be together the whole weekend, don't go to church. There's problems in the church that will affect my, our clan. <laughs> so, she ha somehow happened to escape and came to church. And those devil says, we are finished. <laughs> We told her, we sent someone all the way from Ghana or wherever to tell her that this service don't attend. It's not a good one. <laughs> you know, when I came from that service, I was healed of my tickets. <laughs> I was healed of all the pains because that scripture when it comes at all things work together for good let me tell you something you don't need to see the good to rejoice but you must know that God does not lie even if you don't see the good all things work together for the good to those that love the Lord and I was very sure that I love him <clears throat> in the time of your tempest it's time to feed on the word that is one thing you must do. If you ever have listened to tabs, of course, you don't need to wait for storms to listen, listen to tabs more in storms. No, you must listen every time. But it's good to change gear to a desperate measures, call, uh, desperate situations, call for desperate measures. You must believe that any situation that you face, there is someone in the Bible or someone in the spoken word or someone even in this church who overcame that situation there is a scripture somewhere that can take you out of your situation there is a quote somewhere that can take you out of your situation there is a testimony somewhere there is a sermon somewhere that is waiting for you to take you out of your situation so in those moments fear not <coughs> Whatever you are facing, fear not. Fear not is 365 times in the Bible, meaning every day, don't fear. In such moments, stay in line. The Bible says, if our hearts condemn us not, we have confidence with God. In such moment, be good to others. Yes, when you are busy praying for, I've realized this, I saw a quotation like that. It says, when you are praying for others, that's the moment where God answers your prayers. Amen. There is no situation where you are deep in that situation where you are justified to pray for yourself only. No matter what you are passing through. Don't say amen without considering another person who is in a worse situation than you. So in such situations, have positive confession. Hallelujah. Don't start writing poems about your situation. Amen. Don't start saying the devil is cruel. It, you are cruel to the devil if you, if you start fighting him with quotes and scriptures. Amen. Oh, the devil in my children, the devil in my wife, the devil in the pastor, the devil in this other person. See God Amen. in your storms. Satan cannot destroy what God protects. He has no capacity to destroy you. So the Bible says, he that began a good work in you will bring it to his completion. He has never led you this far to, to lose you. In such moments, encourage yourself in the Lord. There was a time when David had to encourage himself in the Lord. In such moments, 
know the scripture and the courts that will meet the challenge of the hour because when the enemy comes like a flood the spirit of god raises a standard every christian believer has to be pushed into those trials every christian believer has to be put on the airship so he can come forth with an experience to say i know my redeemer liveth now with what has happened in with my tickets and everything i i, I have a rich testimony Risha, that if i cannot buy it with the money that i lost yeah but the money was big but anyway god is in control just be super and vigilant yeah but those were thousands but anyway persecution and trials are natural they are a normal part of christian life there is only one thing to do about them commit them to the all to god judge not and leave their outworking the final judgment to him now in psalms 34 verse 4 it says i saw the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears and they looked upon him and they were lightened you not know, just looking upon god or just attending a service you are lightened your patience becomes lighter their faces were not ashamed this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles Amen. it doesn't matter how poor you are when you call to lord to the lord even in the presence of your hammers and your peninas and your adversities in the presence of the storms i like what john did <clears throat> they boiled him in a drum of oil the historians say he did not wait to come out of the drum of oil he started preaching inside that drum don't wait to come out of your situation and say i will i will save the lord when when i'm out of my situation i went preaching and casting devils even in the midst of my problems but because i was telling my children that let's cheer up we are to really rejoice if you those who are seeing what we're doing we're really having a good time and it confuses the devil you are not fighting for victory you are fighting from victory unto victory so victory is guaranteed because in all things we are more than conquerors tell the devil that he's a liar christ said he is a liar he overcame the world greater is he that is within you than the one in the world greater is he the power of christ in you than the sickness that is in your body so when i may be weak but my god is strong <clears throat> maturity in spiritual matters is when you don't react the way you are provoked whatever provokes you it's it's its nature it should not affect your nature to be kind if you are a husband that is loving there is nothing that the wife can bring out of you that is bad if you are a wife that is loving there is nothing that your husband can bring out of i know you may face infidelity trust issues and what but be good like that woman was saying must jesus pay the cross alone with an abusive she tamed the abusive as she was passing through trials but she tamed them so you can even cheer and rejoice in the midst of storms because god is the final say and there is no situation that is so dark that god cannot deliver you from when you are passing through such situation against hope believe in hope call things that are not as though they are and one thing that is very important when you are passing through those moments create an atmosphere for victory Amen. the storms you met at, at work whatever they say to you don't bring that atmosphere at home <laughs> whatever your boss insulted and shouted and said you are this and that don't come to your children and say you are this and that and come to your wife you are this and that don't bring such an atmosphere at home defeat it before you enter your home whatever happens don't allow the devil to see your tears whatever happens never lose your praise 
whatever happens confuse the enemy whatever happens be careful of nothing but in all things through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make your request known unto god in such moment do this pray an effectual fervent prayer you can't be in problems and then you are praying and you are yawning you are another problem that you are having <laughs> when you are in problems pray a prayer that shows that you are a soldier put on the whole armor of god and fight and prophesy your victory don't wait for the pastor to prophesy your victory prophesy your victory and say this too is passing away god is determined every trial that you must face and god has seen that in you there's sufficient power you will give grace sufficient grace for every moment for every trial what you should not do when you are in storms when you are passing through trials don't murmur that's what they did when they were they were even eaten by serpents because they mem if you remember your situation will eat you if, when you are passing through hard times or trials you those that observe lying vanities they forsake their mercy don't observe those lying vanities it may look real that you have no money it may look real that you are forsaken it may look real that is dark it may look real that you, are, you have hit the rock bottom but Jesus is that rock. He's the rock of ages. In such moment, be like the Shunammite and say, it is well. You may say, Pastor, I'll be lying. Yes, you'll be lying if you say it's not well because this word does not lie. It says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. <laughs> Stay down your challenges with the boldness of Christ. In those moments, it's not the time to start looking for scriptures. Scriptures must be in you in those moments. What you need in those moments, you must have it now. Then you shall say, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that shall come upon all that dwell on the earth righteous or unrighteous all that dwell on the earth will meet an hour of temptation believe against hope when it got darker and darker abraham grew stronger and stronger when it lingered and lingered and seemed to be further and further abraham's faith was higher and higher we are troubled on every side but not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed always bearing in the body the dying of the lord so standing stand in faith even when you are having the hardest time of your life and good things are about to come keep believing the whole question is not yours and never limit god now when you are passing through those hard times one thing that you must not do don't sin you'll be hard on yourself if you sin in that moment when david was passing through those moments he started walking around the roof and he made it worse he, lo he was almost losing a battle then a brother came and helped him now he lost in affairs there and later he had to lose a child so you see he was now crying and fasting because of a situation that he built sin will take you further than you want to go when you are passing through such moment don't make permanent moves because of a temporary situation don't just leave that church and say i'm not going to you will never see i'll never darken that door again you will sit home desiring that song service <laughs> But you have said I would never darken that door. It was just a small moment. And you did permanent moves. <laughs> the prophet teaches us that don't overthink. Because you are only doing, causing ulcers, not answers in those moments. <laughs> don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give away. Stay true at that time. Don't 
follow wrong examples. Amen. That this one tried to trust the Lord. He died. <laughs> Have you died yourself ever since you trusted the Lord? Don't take wrong examples in those. Don't look for a pity party. For, you know, there are people who feel massaged in their ego and you say, oh, sorry, brother. Sorry, sister. Then they drop one or two tears. Then they say, yeah, yeah okay, now, now it's so. Be strong. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I don't need people to just come and say, sorry, brother, we are so sorry. So what should we do? Can we make Coca, can we bring Coca-Cola for you? Bring me a coat, I'll be fine. <laughs> yes, there are days where I need a Coca-Cola, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you what not to do in those moments. I'm closing, my time is already up here. Don't miss service. <laughs> Some people they are passing through hard times. They say, Pastor, today I'm not able to come. You are finished. <laughs> that is a reason to come. When you are sick, that is a reason to come to church. <laughs> Let's tend to have it. My time is up. Hey, I feel like I, I, I would I will pick it up one of these days. When you are under attack, don't panic. When I was busy running up and down, you know, at that time when I was trying to change users to euros, there is something that my wife said. That was the answer. But I was panicking. I ran. Then when we were done, I noticed when the flight was going that, oh, if I listen to her at that moment, we're going to... Anyway, we are done with the flights. Let's, don't go back to the problem, right? <laughs> go forward in every situation. <laughs> When you are facing such moments, rejoice about them as you see. I'm rejoicing. <laughs> don't find, don't go to wrong helpers. I've seen believers who panicked and went to some people who helped them who are not believers, and they gave them some oils. And then later, demon says, what, "What that oil that they were giving was the new spoil." <laughs> Stay in the message. Don't panic and go to, to Zion and go to my apostle. Stay. Put in the message. Be still and know. When you panic and run, you bang, you, you, you bounce on something. That is your new problem. <laughs> Don't destroy your testimony. Hallelujah. In those moments. In moments like this, I sing out a song. Just say, I love you, Lord. If you have run out of what to say about your situation, just say, singing, I love you, Lord. And God is able to turn your situation. Amen. And every pattern will become a blessing. Amen. And you will find that the devil won't like bringing problems to you. Amen. You are of a special kind. You, you, are, you are going to turn that problem to be the own goals of the devil. Whatever you pass through, you don't have to feel want to be felt like if they offend you don't be like a millipede you touch it it springs 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 then it folds itself it says yeah you will see me i'm not going to touch that mic i'm not going to sing i'm not going to preach i'm not going to to give you anything you won't see my tithe this month until you apologize you see you are getting into new problems <laughs> but when you are when you just say, Lord, maybe the Lord has told me to do that. He has told she made to spit on me. You are now more like Jesus, like that. See, those stones, God is bigger than our stones. Those stones will become blessings to us. In those stones, you will see the rainbows. You will see the beauty of Jesus, right? Are we ready to pray? Let's pray each one in their own way, wherever you are. Let me, let's pray our heavenly father we thank you for the assurance that we have in your word you teach us father that even in adoption we pass through inspection we pass through lord father where the lord tests us and turns things around us so that you can see our reaction that is where we fail many times that is where we fail lord father to trust you but we've learned that it is so sweet to trust in jesus just to take him at his word just to know that he is a present help in time of need father i'm so glad that i've learned to trust you sometimes it takes mountains sometimes it takes deserts sometimes it takes rejection sometimes it takes unpleasurable situations sometimes it takes the storms of life 
to put us where we are supposed to be. We know Father is not supposed to be like that. Teach us to hear the promptings of your spirit. Teach us not Father, to hear the leadership of the spirit so that we don't need to get into unnecessary storms and unnecessary tests because we fail to hear your voice. Father, I pray that though you try us, we will love you, Father. Though we are passing through the hardest moment of our life, let us be a blessing to others. Though we are passing through accusations and discouragements and storms of life, the stormy clouds of darkness will soon turn to a brightest day. The light but soon is coming. Father, may we take courage and know that we are not left alone. There is a God who is faithful. There is a God who takes charge in every situation, in all things. The heavens truly rule. Father, as I'm preaching, as I'm praying today, maybe there is someone who is passing through what we are talking about. Maybe there is someone who is passing through hard moments in their finances and they have no school fees for their children and the deadlines have come father may you provide for that person father if there is someone who is passing through a place so father where they, their soul is overwhelmed may you lift them to a rock that is higher than them may they know that there is a god in heaven who knows our tears who understand our tears and tears are a language sometimes that he understands although he wants us not to cry but speak the word and go forward father teach us your principles and your precepts that can never fail teach us to, to see you in every situation though the storms when we hear the lightning flashing and the thunders roar we must know father you promised never to leave us we must say never alone Father, I pray that in whatever we've lost in life, let us never lose our praise. Let us never lose our faith in you. Let us rejoice, Father, in its sorrow, in its tempest. May we show much maturity. May we show our, ourselves worthy of the promise because he that promised is faithful. And in his good time, he makes all things beautiful. I pray, Father, for everyone here and online who is passing through the hardest moments, who is passing through the storms of their life, who is passing through rejections and worries and fears, who is passing through barrenness, who is passing through failures, who is passing through unpleasant situations. May they know that you are there and you are in charge. Bless us, Father, as we leave this place. May you be with us and go with us. Bless us, Father, and give us all our heart's desires. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We've come to the end of the service. Um, may the Lord answer all your needs and all your desires. I think on Friday I will just be taking the message the mighty conqueror. Thanks, Brother Taku. When I was in Belgium, I didn't know that Waterloo is in Belgium. So he wrote a message to me, say, Pastor, can you visit Waterloo? for us where the battle where napoleon was was defeated and the prophet had said when he was in belgium he was just near that place he says where those relics are the replica i went and saw those things that he writes about years back so i will just present something on what we saw in that um museum the actually the shape of the museum of it is the shape of drums it's a drum because the Na Napoleon soldier, when the battle was what, they asked him to sound retreat. He says, I was not taught to sound retreat. So he sounded even louder. So we are not taught to give up. Pray even louder. God bless you. Usually we sing the song, take the name of Jesus as we go, but let us...
after a service like this you know you just feel like traveling on amen how many feel like travel as we have our way amen <clears throat> mm, my heavenly home is bright and fair i feel like traveling on no pain no death can enter there I feel like traveling on oh yes I feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on my heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on oh with glittering towers the sun outshine i feel like traveling on that heavenly mansion shall be mine i feel like traveling on oh i feel like traveling on I feel like traveling on Oh my heavenly home is bright and fair I feel like traveling on The Lord, oh the Lord has been so good to me I feel like traveling on Until that I see I feel like traveling on 